Okay, so everybody loved the domino video, but that is not the only thing that I make from resin. So here I have two rolling trays that are made completely from resin. Um, I, just as a forewarning, this takes a lot of resin. It takes a lot of resin, and but I love it. <laughs> I love it. So this set here was done using resin, glitter, and I tinted my resin with um, acrylic paint. So this one is like really pretty and the back is clear. And I just did these not too long ago, so I still have to like refine the edges because they're still a little sharp. But I wanted you to at least see what's gonna happen. This would be a stash jar. Um, and it's a good amount of room in this jar. I was skeptical because the reviews on um, Amazon were like different, so I wasn't sure, but this was completely made from resin as well. And then we have the actual tray, which was also completely made of resin. And generally this starts out from me using it um, when I'm making a project and I have leftover resin, I don't like to waste it. So I'll just pour it in a random mold. Um, and this particular one came from a vase that I made. Um, I had extra, the colors were left over. So what I did was I poured all of the colors um, into these molds. And then um, later on, I just filled it in with, you know, like white and just clear, some glitter and stuff um, to make a complete set. This too, was the result of um, other projects, making dominoes before I really kind of got a grasp on how much resin to use for uh, each set of dominoes. Um, I would just pour the leftover glitter into this and I try to keep it where I'm using coordinating colors. I, don't, I try not to just make it super random. So this one is the jar as well all black you can see the white well it's more like a pearl in the bottom and it's visible on the actual bottom but it's a pearl in there and then the same in the lid and I, I mean even though it's like a, a a dump thing where I'm just using leftover resin from other projects I still try to make it make sense so again we have an ashtray here this one is like a round it's not round but obviously it's like a diamond cut and then we have the tray itself, which is the result of dominoes as well. So as I finish with dominoes and I have leftover resin, I would just pour it in. So you can see some of the layers, how they worked out. And each one will be completely different. So even though I made these um, out of leftover resin, I figured I'd come here and actually do a tutorial showing me making um, a set. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do here. I know this time I want to play around with alcohol ink instead of tinting the, the um, resin with acrylic paint. So I have my alcohol inks. And yes, I'm really a zero waste kind of girl. Look what this container is from ice cream and I use I keep the ice cream containers I clean them and then I just store stuff in them so these worked great for my alcohol inks um and I have larger ones with other things in them like with my sewing materials actually this one is the same size and it has like my sewing stuff in it so I really try zero waste y'all zero waste so let's get started um let me move these out of the way first And I'm trying, I'm gonna try to do this video with as little editing as possible. Um, so I have no music on, my computer's completely off. Um, and I'm gonna try to not edit this as much. Um, that's the goal, let's see if it works. So here we have our mold. This is the mold for the lid of the stash jar. 
okay it's a shiny mold so whatever you put in here is gonna come out glossy um this is the base we got a leftover black resin in there i don't want that in there just in case i do a lighter color but this is the other half of the stastra mold so this is basically the mold upside down the bottom is finished last um and for the top the top is finished last so we'll be pouring in this way so essentially once your mold is done you pull your resin out it'll go together this way so all right this is my ashtray mold i'm gonna use the square one today um, I should have gotten a square stash jar. I didn't really think about it, but whatever. Um, but we're going to use the square cigarette, um, well, not cigarette, but the square ashtray mold. And then this is my actual tray mold. And this is where most of the resin goes. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to, um, this feels a little tacky. Is it dusty? It is a little dusty. So I'm gonna just spray this down with alcohol so I can get it cleaned up and then we can move forward. And let me just spray this down. Of course I need to refill my container. I go through alcohol like nobody's business, y'all. So let me just wipe this down, get some of the impurities off the tray because I don't know what color I'm going with. And I don't want, um, I don't want random, like, spots of, like, old resin. Um, these are a little harder to clean, so I'm not gonna drive myself crazy. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw the paper towel around there. And this is definitely, like, damn near impossible to clean, like, so, whatever. I try to store it, because I don't put it away in a drawer most of the time when I'm making a lot. So I try to store it with the shiny side covered and not exposed. So typically since I pour my resin in here, I would store it like this because then any dust or debris that gets into the room or is in the room, it'll be on the outside of the mold and not on the inside where I care where stuff look like the stuff comes out at. So this would essentially get stored this way and then the same for this. Um, so, of course, anytime you're using resin, you should have gloves. I probably should not have these gloves. These are not very good. These are vinyl gloves, and they're thin, and I got them from Walmart, and sometimes being cost-effective is not the best thing in the world, but I'm going to make do with them until I run out. So, I got these gloves. I tend to use more than one set per project because they're so thin, and I, I feel like the resin starts to seep through. Um, I realized when I decided to start doing this that I did not have large cups. So, I am going to um, be randomly mixing my resin, pouring it, and then mixing some more, and then pouring it. So, those parts I will edit out. <laughs> I'm not going to make anybody sit and watch that. Um, but that's what's going to happen today. Because sometimes you just got to make do with what you have and keep it pushing. So, I'm using my cups. I got my stir sticks. I like to use larger stir sticks because um, it mixes faster. And I'm not so anal about bubbles. Like, I don't really get bubbles. And you know what? You'll see one of my tricks today as far as bubbles are concerned. Um, and then I have alcohol inks. These are Jack Jack Jackward. Um, and I think, hmm, I've been feeling real bad beachy lately real beachy and i may have to do this in layers to achieve the the beachy look so then that means that vanessa is going to be editing um i do beachy yeah i can't this says this is the the this is the ray bar it's gonna but it comes out a little tail whatever how about a rainbow y'all we could do a rainbow we could do a rainbow. So we got some blue. Um, I guess what? It would be purple, then blue. What comes after blue? Green. But blue, what color it would blue makes green? Blue with yellow makes green, right? So if I put I could still put a little green. Okay. And then 
yellow, orange, pink. Is that right, y'all? <laughs> Boy, you would think that I uh, actually would notice. Yeah, I guess. We'll make it work. So, we'll do a rainbow. Um, and I don't think I've ever colored anything by alcohol ink in a video yet. No, no, I haven't. I've done everything with acrylic paint. So, this is new for me as well. Um, and then I gotta have my sparkle. So, we got some crystal glitter. This is from Creatology. Creatology. I think this is from Michaels. So it's the Michaels and the Walmart one comes in the same kind of container. But I think this is Michaels. So, let's get started. Uh, as I mentioned before, I realized after I started this that I didn't have large cups, so I'm going to be mixing three batches and then dividing them in to have six colors. So of course I'm going to put on gloves to protect my hands. Um, if you've ever worked with resin, you know that resin is extremely sticky and hard to get off of your skin with just soap. Um, a trick I did find is that I use uh, some 91% alcohol if it's still a little tacky and that helps get the, the little residue off of my hands. So here I use Permarine, Epoxy, and Hardener. This is a new kit. Um, the last kit I had it has a really minute amount in it and I don't feel like struggling so we're just going to open the new one. Now when I open up my epoxy, the epoxy tends to be a little thicker, that's the part A. And I leave the foil in there because sometimes the epoxy will push it and slow the flow. And I'm going to pour that into three of the cups. Um, I At this point, I know how to like eyeball it to make sure that I get enough um, in where it can fit in both. Like both of them can fit in one cup. <laughs> so I kind of like eyeball the halfway mark. And here I'm just making sure that I have like the right amount in each cup. And I will shift some over to another as I need to see that I put a quite a large hole in the resin itself but in the hardener I tend to put a smaller hole because it's a little more liquid and it pours out faster there's no need for the hole to be as large and now I'm going to make sure that I have equal amounts in all cups so that I don't end up with sticky resin um, after mixing or when, well, once it's cured, rather. Once I'm sure that each cup has equal parts, I can go ahead and begin to mix. I tend to pour the hardener into the resin because it's more liquid and I know that I'll get majority of it out of the cup. Now, when you first start mixing resin, you'll notice that as you start to mix the resin with the hardener, you'll see that the mixture is a little cloudy and that's an indication that the two parts are not mixed. You'll notice that it's fully mixed once it's crystal clear. Even if it has bubbles, it'll become crystal clear and you'll be able to see the difference. If it looks cloudy or um, I guess some people think it looks stringy, then you know that it's not fully mixed and you should continue stirring until it's clear. That way you don't end up with any sticky areas. So I'm going to just go ahead and continue mixing up the other two batches so that we can go ahead and start dropping our alcohol ink colors in. The difference between alcohol ink and um, using acrylic paint as a colorant, alcohol ink has a tendency to be sheer and that's why I wanted to try it out this way uh, for this for this set. Um, I haven't done, I don't think I've done anything really, no dominoes, oh no I did, I used black alcohol ink for the black dominoes, but I haven't used alcohol ink to really color anything. Um, lately and I really do like the fact that it's sheer 
So I'm just showing you how sheer it is and realizing that I need just a bit more alcohol ink so that the color will actually show. And I'm going to just go ahead and mix all of them in and I slowly realized that I was going to need to add um, more alcohol ink to each one to make it come out as not necessarily, it won't be opaque because you'll be able to see through it completely, but I wanted to make sure the colors were nice and strong. Now this is the blue, um, actually no that was the green. For some reason that green comes out blue. Oh no, that was the blue. <laughs> so you can see this it's slightly different on screen. You can actually see that there's a slight difference in color where the green doesn't next it doesn't look like forest green. It's supposed to be forest green. And it looks very, very blue. So what I did was I ended up putting some yellow alcohol ink into that one to kind of bring out the green a little bit more. Um like I said, it says forest green, but that forest green is actually more of a, like a, a teal or maybe an ocean green, perhaps. Um, but the, the yellow helped a little bit. So now we can just go ahead and pour these colors in the mold. Um, I'm going for like a diagonal look. The resin will shift and move as it gets warm. So I know whatever I pour right now, it is not going to remain like that. It's going to continue moving and have a mind of its own. And here I'm pouring in the blue. That blue is so pretty. I think I'm going to have to make something that has just that blue. Like, that blue is amazing. And then I'll go ahead and dump in the green. Or almost green, because that ain't green. I was looking more for like an actual green. Like a forest green, the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Um, the yellow does help with it a little bit. It helped a lot here because it didn't look as blue. And then we'll get the yellow in. I probably should have put a little more alcohol ink in the yellow because it was really, really clear. Like almost clear, not tinted yellow clear. So anyway, lesson learned for the future. And then our orange. And you'll notice I'll, I'm just going to start pouring the ink, the, the version wherever I feel like it because it's going to move anyway and when you pour resin on top of resin it, it causes shifts so even if I put an orange on top of something blue it will make its way down and here we got our pink and that pink is extremely pretty as well and I'm gonna get some over here in the ashtray And like I said, I wasn't looking um, for it to look any specific way. I just wanted to get all my colors in and um, just have like a rainbow, a nice little rainbow. So here you see bubbles on the surface. Um, as the resin warms up, it the bubbles come up. But when you spray it with 91% alcohol, it will make all of the bubbles kind of like dissipate. And you know, alcohol kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It evaporates anyway so once it comes in contact with the resin it will help the bubbles um, pop and then as it remains on the surface as the bubbles rise it will assist them in popping more so if you're having issues where you're getting a lot of bubbles in your your work on the surface of your work you can definitely spray your molds like spritz your mold with with the alcohol before you pour the resin and it'll kind of like pop the bubbles as it's touching the surface um, that also helps if your resin is warm before you pour it that also helps too so just a, a tip for anyone who's consistently getting holes in the surface of their projects when they're doing um, their resin in a mold so I guess I'll repeat it one, you can spray the surface of your mold with 91% or higher alcohol. Two, you can spray the surface of the resin after it's poured with 91% or higher alcohol. And three, you can also wait until your resin is slightly warm before pouring it. So at this point, um, my resin is cured enough to the point where it's extremely tacky and I can get ready to pour my next layer. I'm just filling in a few spots um, I noticed didn't have any resin on it 
and I'm going to warm it just to make the resin kind of melt into what's already there and all that stuff was so sticky y'all like everything was sticking together it was starting to drive me crazy but if your resin is not fully 100% cured you can always soften it by heating it up so that's why I use the heat gun and just to spread a little bit now I'm ready to uh, begin mixing um, another batch of resin I told y'all this this thing uses a lot I think I measured it out at um, I want to say each cup is a five ounce cup and I mix the cup six times a full cup six times so I'm gonna say it's approximately 30 ounces of resin that takes to make these sets and I still haven't even done the grinders um, because I'm waiting on well by the time you guys see this I'll have the molds but I was waiting on grinder molds so um, those will take some resin as well but here I'm going to mix up some clear resin and throw a little of the crystal glitter in it and essentially this will be the base of the tray and the ashtray and everything this is what you'll see on the bottom and it's just going to add a little more sparkle I love sparkle if you can tell makes everything better and that won't be enough I'll actually have to add some more you guys will see me add a little more I'll mix another batch and I'll add some more to that as, and then go ahead and pour into the ashtray, um, the, the stash jar lid and the stash jar itself. So the final layer of resin is poured in, it's clear, very sparkly. Um, this desk is not level, so I'm going to move everything to a level, a more level area. Um, because as you might be able to see, it's starting to pull towards this side. So I'll just move it. Um, I'm a little disappointed that my color isn't in the whole center of the ashtray. Um, I think I might go ahead and drip some alcohol ink in it like I did for the jar. And see, well, you can kind of see where the alcohol ink is kind of right in the middle. And then we got the lid. Um, and I'll come back and see mold everything um, when it's all cured. This resin takes a little longer to cure than the Amazing Clear Cast that I use for my tumblers. Um, but it will have a cure where I can demold it um, within 12 to 24 hours. And it will be fully hard within 72 hours. Alright, so um, it's time to take them out the mold. It's been well over 12 hours at this point. I think it's been like a full 24. Um, I did take a sneak peek and demold a little bit this morning before I went to work because I was so freaking impatient, but it was still soft. So I just tucked it right back in so that it could continue to cure properly. So let's start with the small pieces first. All right, so this is our stash jar lid. We got some spillage, but I'll clean that up with like an X-Acto knife and um, a sanding block. Ooh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, look at it. You could kind of see, you see through it. It's, it's, it's clear, it's translucent. Look at all the colors. 
So yeah, I'll just clean that up later. Um, all right, so let's get all dry. Now this one is super hard to demold. Um, I always struggle with the jar part. <laughs> Gotta kinda, oh, I'm gonna have to clean these cause it left ink residue. So once I get it flipped all the way, it kinda just rolls off. Oh my goodness, y'all. Look at it. Oh gosh, I'm in love. And I don't even smoke. I should be using a demolder for this one because I'm going to mess around and tear the mold. Whew. Let's put that back in its proper place. Oh. See how I struggle to create beautiful things for people? I never used a, like a demolder, so I don't know. My thumb is all messed up. Look, and you see how the, the crystal glitter kind of created like a little frosted look in there. Oh, it's so colorful. All right, so, and just so you know, it actually works. They do screw together. Oh, I don't know if this video is really doing it justice. All right, and here's our sticker. This is the piece that I uh, took all the way out this morning. Me being impatient. I got a little piece of resin extra in ya. Let's get that out. There we go. Look at it. And then I did drip some alcohol ink from the back. So that all of this would be fully covered because remember it was only covered in the center and it's so pretty if you can gosh i have to find a way to put a light behind it so you can really see like all the colors because i can see all the colors because the light is in front so when i look behind i can see all of the colors in here all right so that's the ashtray and this too this will get cleaned up on the edges with a sanding block um, to smooth it out but this is so freaking pretty now for the tray let's just let's take it off take it off take it off Ooh, those edges sharp Ooh, honey look at it oh my goodness on the crystal glitter it looks so pretty i really like it i really really like it i'm so glad that i chose to do this one like this oh we just gotta see them all together hmm. and um i'm just gonna let this be the 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 end of this video um i'll come back with another video cleaning up all of them i'll show you how i clean up the edges um i put clear feet on them so that they don't scratch surfaces and um prep them to be shipped out so that'll be in another video because i'll do all three sets at one time um i actually think i'm gonna do a fourth set and maybe i'll do a video with the fourth set but anyway toodles <laughs>